right we've given up on this uh, on these these tanks i cannot get this kink out um i've cut and re-welded it three times i've tried tweaking it like that i've tried clamping it i've tried clamping it across the top i've heated it i've done everything i can i just cannot get it right i'm not happy with it it's scruffy looking and it's at the wrong shape so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to admit defeat um and i'm going to buy some proper tube at great expense now the reason i i went for the rolled tube method is because uh, these were cheaper but i should have got the tube in the first place problem is i have to get six meters of it that's the minimum i can get i've hunted everywhere i've looked at um chimney flues i've looked at wheelie bins I've looked at ducting and air flues and all sorts of stuff on the internet. I know every single bit of stainless steel pipe in all of the UK. And it just seems to be, to get one that's 300 millimeter at one and a half mil thick is really awkward. I've only found one place that do it. And that's, that's the place that I got the end caps from. And uh, so I'm just gonna have to suck it up a bit. It's just not gonna be good enough. I can't have that like that I mean it might not look like much and I did sort of think about wonder if uh, what could I use as an experiment uh, you know kind of covering it up imagine if I cut a piece of stainless tube and cut it in half and, and welded it along like that and kind of pretended that it was supposed to be like that but reality is it's not it's not good enough. So I'm going to do it again. So today I'm going to do some machining of these uh, three old penetrators and carry on with the viewports. Right, now I could easily get grumpy about that pipe, but reality is it's happened. Let's just deal with it. So I'm not going to be miserable. I'm going to get that really expensive um, pipe ordered, which hopefully will be here when I get back on um, Christmas holidays. And I'm going to carry on with this. Uh, but this one, I can't remember where I got to, I was turning out the four, I think. Just one thing I've noticed is that that sort of thing going along here, particularly with more aggressive cuts, and when it's um, on the, the oxide layer, to try to get that oxide layer out, um, the whole tool just ever so slightly moves around and so I'm getting like a tapered um, tapered port so I put the style indicator on just to make sure that it isn't moving at all when I, was, when I, when I did it before I, I could literally see it creeping around and you, you can feel it and I was getting a, um, a movement of about 10,000 but now I've got underneath that oxide layer and it seems to be working okay really tedious doing this bore to find a speed where it's actually breaking the chips properly so I don't need to do chips I've got better chip control but I'm taking a one millimetre cut a one mil off diameter I worked out I've got to do another 40 eight more or less 40 passes if I go too too aggressive my tools starts to move around Right, these aren't particularly difficult to make to be honest, they're just tedious. It's a lot of work to get to bore done. Uh, anyway, this is out of everything, this is the most difficult bit of the, the job. Um, so I'll just show you this, I might have shown it before, but um, I've got to go one tenth of a millimetre now off of this, uh, this surface, which is hardly anything. So I'm going to put in. Uh, on my DRO, dialing. Back one tenth a millimeter. It's very small. And then I'm going to turn to a shoulder. I'm going to go down and out. And I've got plenty of leeway on uh, on this part. See that's. Uh, 
should be 61.5, so I've got plenty to spare there. And I've got this, this, uh, uh, this is 22 and a half, more or less. So I've got, so and I'm going to finish it off by taking that and that down to the division. It's the easiest way to do it without knocking it off. But this ball now is, needs to be done properly. So I'm put my, put my uh, depth cut on and go down. I'm not changing my speed, uh, my feed rate at all because um, I'm getting a good finish with this setup. So I'm just leaving it as it is. And I'm going to stop. I don't want the clutch to go off because it bounces back and, and makes a mark. So I'm going to grab it my own there, lock the carriage, and I'm put in two tents. Depth of cut across the face. And I'm going to come across the face now. Fire and pass that's all in one bag. Two twelve exactly. Well, within a tenth. Sorry, within a hundredth. You see anyone, any there that's closer than the zero? I'm not sure I can. Anyway, calling that good. So unless uh, I manage to find any alternative in the next 24 hours it looks like i'm going to end up with some spare pipe so i thought that i could could make an adjustment to jody b as well i've so this is something that i've been thinking of for a while anyway so i could make some saddle tanks last year i did put that um penetrator in and that is actually physically there and that was going to be for these uh lift bags which i never really finished off or didn't work out or whatever but um it does mean that i could you know i've got some some tube that i could, could use for saddle tanks i've already got one of the penetrators in so i only need to do the, the valves for the handle um they're too high in this position as you can see uh, that's not really the right place the water lines usually around here so that'd be too low although they would work in that position as just uh extra um, stability I suppose but really what they want to be is uh, let me just quickly perhaps a bit higher uh, it's not done properly obviously um yeah I think something like that might work still with those with that better feed rate I'm, at, least I'm, at least I'm getting chips like this which is a lot easier to clear up